Bonjour tout le monde, ce talk va être en anglais, donc préparez-vous. Je vais essayer de parler doucement, mais euh, si jamais c'est trop rapide, fais une signe comme ça et je vais ralentir un peu. D'accord Cool. OK, here we go. <coughs> After a few years of working in tech, I've started to feel like this fortune teller at the start of projects. Because I've been on more than a few teams, been in more than a few companies, and now in two different countries. And I've noticed there's a lot of patterns that repeat themselves. So if I look into my crystal ball today, I see a project that some of you will be working on very soon. In about one year, precisely, your boss is going to run up to your desk in a panic. He's going to say, oh my god, I just found out. We have to make our entire app accessible before the end of the month, or else our company is going to get sued. So drop what you're doing right now. This is first priority. Go, go, go. And then he's going to walk off. And at your desk, you're probably going to open up ChatGPT and ask, how do I make my app accessible? And I'll tell you in advance, you're going to be disappointed by the reply. So you're just going to sit. Sit for a minute as this stress and deadline and all of this unknown about how you, have to, how you can make your app accessible just kind of settles in all around you. So raise your hand if you don't want that to be your future. Good, everyone's hand should be up. And that's exactly why I'm here today. I'm here to help you avoid this last minute panic to prepare in advance to learn the basics about what this is so you can actually start one year in advance, preparing yourself for the European Accessibility Act and its deadline of June 28, 2025. So let's get started. What exactly is the European Accessibility Act? This is a directive that's coming from the European Commission and basically, it's telling us to make products and services accessible in Europe. And its goal was to make sure that each member state, that each country in the European Union didn't go off and do their own thing when it comes to legislation around accessibility. And if you notice, it's talking about products and services. It doesn't say websites, mobile apps, iOS apps, because this directive is actually very general. It covers everything from an ATM at the bank to a ticketing system at the airport to those apps and websites that you're working on with your team. So if you want to know the detailed how am I supposed to be in compliance with this European Accessibility Act, this document is not going to tell you the level of detail that you need. Instead, it's going to point you to another document, which has a super lovely name. It is the EN301549. <laughs> there is no abbreviation. So this document is the European standard for uh, digital accessibility, specifically for information and communications technologies, or ICT. And this ICT category, it does include mobile apps and websites, but it's still a bit too broad for what we're looking for. It covers biometrics, electronic documents. So for us, it's going to forward us to yet another document, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And this right here, this is a global standard that tells you how you can make your app and your websites accessible. It's this big list of rules that they call success criteria. And it gives us the level of detail that we're looking for. If we take one of these rules, one of these success criteria as an example, we have 1.3.4, which talks all about orientation. So it tells us that in our apps, we need to support both portrait and landscape orientation, and that we should never block our app in one orientation or the other, unless it is absolutely necessary. So it's this level of detail. That's enough information to take this rule 
go out, modify your Android app or your iOS one, and meet this criteria. Now there's about 80 of these, 8-0, in uh, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, uh, or WCAG for short. And each one of these criteria is marked with a certain level. You have the most basic level of accessibility. The criterion would be marked with level A. A little bit more complete, a little bit more accessible would be level AA. And the most complete and most accessible is triple A. With all of these levels, for the European Accessibility Act, we only need to focus on the first two. So only the criterion that are focused on, that say level A or level AA. So that cuts down our list of 80 success criteria. Let's see, so there it is, levels A and AA. Another fun thing about WCAG is that it is a living document. So every so often, there's gonna be a new version, and usually with this new version, that means they've added a few new rules in there. So currently, all of the documentation points, all of the documentation for the European Accessibility Act points to version 2.1. But we already know that this time next year, the documentation is scheduled to update to point to version 2.2. So if your team's goal is to be in compliance uh, for the June 28th deadline of next year, it would be very wise to focus on version 2.2 and the extra rules that they added in that one. So you're ready for the update. So if you remember nothing else about this talk, you can go to sleep after this slide. Uh, <laughs> the most important document for us in terms of implementation on our apps and websites is the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, version 2.2, level AA, which includes the A below. But it's not finished. There's one more document that we need to know about because we're in France. <laughs> France loves to add extra rules. So we have the RGAA. And forgive my pronunciation of French, but this stands for le Référentiel Général d'Amélioration de l'Accessibilité, le RGAA. Is it good? Sweet. <laughs> so uh, this, what is this? This is the glue that turns everything into something legally enforceable in France. So it's gonna point to both our EN 301549 and also to our criteria in WCAG, and then it's gonna add some extra stuff uh, because it is the legal document. It's no longer a directive or a documentation. This is the official one. So it's, uh, if you weren't scared about this deadline, the RGAA specifies a maximum fine of 20,000 euro per service online if you are not in compliance by this deadline. So you don't pay that, but your company pays that. That should scare them. It also talks about in here the who, of who has to comply with this act by this deadline. And I was a bit mean. I didn't tell you this at the beginning because I didn't want to lose half of the crowd. Not all of you have to do this. There, there it is. Everyone in the public sector has to follow these rules. So this is your post office, this is a military application, a public education, things like that. And the RGAA adds another rule. Even if you are a private company, so you're not in the public sector, but your company has a revenue over 250 million euro per year, then you also have to follow all of these rules. So I don't know about you, but off the top of my head, I have no idea how much my company makes per year. So this would be a great question to go on Monday morning to uh, confirm with your legal team if you guys have to comply by this deadline or if you are exempt. So let's recap this uh, web of documents. We have the first layer the European Accessibility Act, which points to our EN 301549, which points to our Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Then the French-specific RGAA, which points to the EN 301549. 
can't forget the last few numbers. And that also points to WCAG, making this WCAG version 2.2 level AA the most important document for us on our development teams when it comes to implementation. Now that we know all this, you could be thinking, great, I'm going to start with this document here, this WCAG, and I'm just going to go through one by one on the success criteria, just fix them all in order. And that's one strategy. But you could start with the most time-consuming parts of WCAG. And that's what I want to share with you, four of the most time-consuming themes running through WCAG that you can start with right away so you can avoid even more this rush and panic at the end of a project. So the first one that is time-consuming is about orientation. We already saw you know, that we should support portrait, landscape, and that we shouldn't lock one orientation or the other. So the um, easiest thing that you can do to get started on this one is to remove the code that is locking your orientation. On Android, if there are any Android developers in the house, uh, you may have this in your manifest file. So for an activity, you could be locking the screen orientation in portrait or landscape. So delete this, first step. On iOS, the most common way I see the orientation locked is in the app settings of Xcode. You have these lovely checkboxes. Most of the time, only one orientation is checked. So instead of deleting something, your mission is to check all four boxes. Now that was super easy. The time-consuming aspect of this is looking at your application after you check these boxes. Now, love it, some people are laughing. You must have done this before. When you first turn your app in landscape mode, it could break your UI. You don't know, you might be missing elements, there may be things off screen, like it may be unusable. So this is going to be a tedious job to go through every screen of your app and fix the layout so it doesn't break things on portrait mode and it works in landscape mode. And it's going to take a bit of time to do that. And you're going to be super proud. And you're going to go show it to your designer. And you're going to say, look at this. It's in landscape mode. And your designer is going to faint. <laughs> it's going to be so ugly to the designer. So you run the risk in developing your app for both orientations that the designer is going to ask you for a custom layout in landscape mode, which may not be that complex, but that takes this long to design, this long to add into the code, and that could be one of the longest, most time-consuming tasks to get into compliance here. Second one, so text size. This could be time-consuming. In WCAG, they ask us to let the user resize the text in the app up to 200% larger than what it originally was. So this is huge. And whenever you do this, on Android, you have nothing to do for now. If you are already using the scale independent pixels for your font size, when the user changes the font size of the system, so in their system settings, your app will automatically adjust. So already done. Same for you guys who are working in iOS and using Swift UI. This comes by default. But there may be a few of you in here that are still on UIKit for iOS, and that's OK, but you have a bit more work. Uh, your text may not resize at all, depending on how you assign the font sizes. So the easiest way that you can fix this, there's a few different ways, but the easiest way is to use a built-in text style from Apple. So remove that, uh, that number assignment for the font size. It's no longer a font size of 24. Instead, it is a text style of body or header or H1 or something like that. So that is the easiest way to fix that. But just like for orientation, when you blow up the size, this could break your UI as well. You may have text that is truncated. You may have uh, views that, I don't know, they just they, a container for text that doesn't allow the text to expand. And uh, this could be tedious going through every screen, looking at every view in the entire app. OK, 
Okay, third one is about colors, and I marked this one as time-consuming because it involves a lot of conversation with uh, your design team and going back and forth. Each text in your app, compared to its background, needs to have a certain level of color contrast to be in compliance with level AA or level AAA in WCAG. And um, so your designers will use a checker to see, OK, do I meet the compliance? If not, they'll start adjusting colors. And they'll probably go back and forth a few times. And then at the end, decide, I don't like the way this looks, and maybe redo parts of the views to avoid that color combination altogether. So this discussion could be a bit long. And the last time-consuming theme you're going to find uh, in WCAG is all about labels. So on web, uh, this is the equivalent of the alt text for views. On iOS, it is called accessibility label. And on Android, it's called content description. But it's all the same thing. And what you're going to do for a change is to make sure that all of the views in your app have an accessibility label. And there's best practices to follow. You need to translate this for all of the languages your app supports. And there may be some discussion with your teammates of what is the best way we can describe this one thing. And if you have a complex app with many screens, with many views, this could take a while as well. I hope you've seen in these four time-consuming tasks here, these aren't complex changes. In terms of technical complexity, these are very, very easy. It's a one-line change, like here. But the, the problem that can run you into, or what can run you into a problem is just running out of time at the end. If you don't have time to sit down and really look at each individual thing that we've talked about. But I hope that makes you a little bit less scared. It's not going to be super complex to get into compliance. But we are running to the end of our time today, so I'd like to wrap things up. At the beginning, I talked about a future that no one wants. <laughs> a future where your company wakes up 30 days before the deadline, dumps this huge project on you, and there's not enough time, and there's all these unknowns, and in addition, you have this threat of a huge fine for your company if you're late. Because we didn't want this future, we started preparing today. We started preparing by learning what is the European Accessibility Act, what documents are involved, what extra document we have because we're in France. And we saw how, in terms of implementation, it all boils down to the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, version 2.2, level AA. And we also touched on four time-intensive themes that you're going to encounter that, in my opinion, should be tackled first thing. So I hope with all of this, on Monday morning, you can walk in with some confidence and bring up this subject. Start that conversation with your legal team and get started preparing for this one entire year in advance. I'm Robin Knatzer, and thank you so much for your attention today. If you have any questions, I'll be hanging out over here because we're a little short on time. But thank you again, and I hope you enjoy the conference.